Welcome in this video where we are going to compare the process of the request for proposal in business when you want to select the best partner for an important project and the nomination of the head of the European Commission just a few days ago. We will see some parallel and something which we could transfer from the business world to the political world to help improve the process because apparently nobody was very happy with the process so it means that there is something to improve. And to do that, we'll see first Donald Tusk announcing the nomination, and we'll see his funny facial expression and body language things. Then we will see the first declaration of Ursula von der Leyen. Let's watch first what the request for proposal principle is all about. When you do a request for proposal, you look for the best partner possible. Business people have been developing the request for proposal system to have a chance to select the best partner when you are on the buyer side and to have a chance to propose the best proposition when you are on the seller side. From a buyer standpoint, step one is to define your needs so that you have the best chance to get the best proposition from the key actors in the market. Step two is to analyze the result of the consultation that you got. Step three is to select the top one and initiate a dialogue in the form of a meeting or an official presentation, a grant oral, and they will have the best proposition possible through this process. At the end, you finally select the one you want and you select it based on objective criteria and the weight of each parameters that you have indicated initially in the consultation. It's interesting also to share your grid of analysis and your grid of decision so that your suppliers can make the best proposition possible and be selected at the end. When you look at the request for proposal process, it has some similarities with the process which is described in Getting to Yes, the AVA business method. You tend to separate the people from the problem, you do not mix that. You tend to focus on finding a solution and sometimes you forgot your initial position, preferring to change the description of your request for proposal to adapt to more creative and more original proposition, providing they fit better your final objective. And then of course you have those objective criteria which are typical of the Harvard Business Method where you try to make a rational decision as much as you can despite our cognitive biases. Coming back to the nomination of Ursula von der Leyen, what was the process? It looks like it has nothing to do with her RFP and that the needs of the various decision makers and the parameters to make the decision did not correspond at all to any form of organized consultation. First, let's watch Donald Tusk announcing the nomination of two ladies and explaining how fascinating it is to have this gender balance. You will see that it's lacking a lot of energy, a lot of pleasure and joy. Apparently, it's the worst day of his life. First and foremost, we have chosen two women and two men for the four key positions. A perfect gender balance. I'm really happy about it. After all, Europe is a woman. I think it was worth waiting for such an outcome. Apparently, Donald, you are not very happy with this balanced gender situation. And your shoulder things, you know, is an indication that you are really not comfortable with this story. Let's go beyond this body language anecdote and indication and let's listen to Ursula von der Leyen describing the next step for her after her nomination. In this interview, you'll see that she has no vision, no plan, no schedule for doing anything because she was appointed before she knew exactly what to do. And this is what's broken in the system. I was uh, overwhelmed and I feel very honored uh, to be nominated as the president of the commission by the council. When I heard about it yesterday, I decided that my very first uh, stop will be here at Strasbourg to meet the European Parliament um, and to go immediately into talks with the parliamentarians because here in the European Parliament is where the heart of democracy, of the European democracy is beating. Um, I intend to listen a lot so that within the next fortnight I'm able to develop um, in the dialogue with uh, the Council and the Parliament a vision for the next five years for Europe, for the Commission, 
that is based on a intensive cooperation between the European Parliament, uh, the European Commission and the European Council. Would you imagine the best contendant in an RFP would be the best before he made any proposition? We have a process which is totally backward. It would have been much better to have a process where people select the best proposition and then support the person rather than having a person selected to supposedly propose the best solution and hopefully get some support here from the parliament. Isn't it a very strange way to do things? You would never imagine that a company would select a supplier before he has compared all the offers. Here we have to look at the logic and the order of things. Do you know any company that instead of doing a request for proposal would select a supplier, tell the supplier you are in charge of the mission, we trust you, and let the supplier visit all the division, all the department, all the stakeholders within the client to understand their needs and build the proposition. Nobody would ever do that because if you were to do that, you would put your best candidate in the worst situation. The worst situation because nobody would really support someone who has been designated before he was selected. And it's a problem that we put good people in failure situation like we did with Miss Ursula van der Leyen because I don't know how good she is, but sure, her talent will be downgraded by the difficulty of the context in which she has been appointed. This is why in every company, first, we define our needs, second, we look for our best partner, third, we make a selection based on objective criteria, and once this has been done, with the maximum support from the stakeholders, the designated candidate becomes in charge of making the deal, making the mission, making it happen. And by doing that, we maximize the chance of success of the person. The European Union is like a very large company with a lot of stakeholders, and they all have more in common to share than differences to separate them. So why don't we try to import good processes to help everyone reach their objective and maximize the outcome? That was my message for this video and food for thought for all of us. What would be your proposition of process? What suggestion would you have to make the decision process improved? Put that in the comment and please, if you love the video, remember to put a like and to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and see you soon.